we are going to begin our second our second Entithrope character creation. We are going to be using one of the wear bugs that are a homebrew race created for Pete and Jeremy's D&D time. The last character we made was a wear ant. And so that leaves only five choices remaining for our second character. I have a, an M well, it's a kind of a pre-prepared, but I have a, an effectively blank character sheet ready to go. And I'll be calling on you all in the audience to roll dice. Can I help you? In order to help complete the character. Yeah, I'll 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 open it up in a separate channel on our Discord, Tamric. Uh yeah, Raichi's back to find ghosts. Hi, buddy. Alright. Uh, apparently he's giving me quite a beard. There we go. Well, I mean, he's giving me a beard, right? <laughs> Sacrifice. Oh, 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 oh. Hi, buddy. Oh, I love you. Oh, I love you so much. I'm mush your face. Mush, 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 mush. Mush, 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 mush. He is such a big boy, too. My goodness. Oh, toe beans. Oh, yeah. He, he has some nice toe beans. Yeah, Raichi, Raichi followed someone home uh, for, uh, to the store and uh, adopted a street cat. Or it was a kitten at the time. Could fit in my hand, and now is a big heckin' chonker. And uh, Nisa I adopted from the Humane Society here as uh, she was the runt of the litter. Um, Kitty, if you want to roll physical dice, you can. But, uh, I mean, I won't stop you, but I, I, need, I need the results in chat uh, from the dice roller there. There we go. That's it. The, the tail's coming off, everyone. I'm just going to do this for a hundred years and eventually we'll get through. Really, these are just butt pets for the cat. <laughs> but I always threaten. I'm like, that's it. Your tail's coming off today, buddy. Oh, put that away. <laughs> that ain't free. <laughs> No, I'm. It, it's not chopping the tail off. I, it, it's it's butt pets for the cat. <laughs> I keep my fingers like this, and so when it when this one hits the tail, the other one kind of clacks against the the other. <laughs> he likes the he likes the the rhythmic kind of a thump 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 thump. thump. Yeah, <laughs> cut the tail off behind the ears. I haven't heard that in a while. Oh my goodness, oh sheeps. <laughs> I probably haven't heard that since I was knee high to a grasshopper. That's some good hydrogen water. All right. We have our handy dandy character creator right here. Yeah. Uh, Hypnotic Gamer, will you roll a percentile in chat to get us started? Uh, do we have, uh, do we have a girl bug, a boy bug? Uh, 59, we have a, we have a boy bug. All right. As for the race, we already know we're making an Entithrope. However, we do not know which Entithrope we're making. Oh, sheeps, I know that you want a bee, or I think what you said, a beetle. So, oh, sheeps, will you please roll a D6? And we will find out which one we're making. Oh, that's right. A bee or a grasshopper. Stops on a four. Ant 
B, Beetle, Grasshopper. We are making an Entithrope Grasshopper. All right. We'll, we'll say it's a Werehopper. Excellent. Uh, King Von Ale. I'm sorry to hear you had some video game uh, troubles. Will you give me a percentile roll in chat? Exclamation point. 1D100. So we can figure out the alignment of our Were Grasshopper. 39. We have a lawful neutral Grasshopper. Oh, hey, Raven, welcome. Raven, will you please roll a D6 to find out at which level we are going to make our character? Disfemis, do you want to get a roll in before you go to sleep? Yep, put your fingerprint on it. On a one, we're making a level three character. A level three character. A uh, disfemist, will you please roll a... Um, I'll let you roll the weird one. Uh, Phydrogen, can you roll a D4? And disfemist, can you roll a D13? No, one starts at three. If I got a result of a one, it's third level, and I go up from there. All right, so we have a two. A, a two and a, another two. Double twos. On, on the last one, I think I made an error, but it's not a bad one because it actually worked out uh, super duper well. Because you're supposed to be in which quadrant of the 13? Because 13 times 4 is uh, is 52. So in the backgrounds, we're actually uh, we're, we're starting here 14 and 15. So it's actually uh, uh, in the second quadrant of the, of the D4. We're in number 2. So we have a... Uh, 13. So we have a, a, another guild artisan. Interesting. And this is also a guild merchant. We have a very thematic party that has been built. And uh, let's find out then uh, what kind of a craft that we sell. Oh, sheeps, will you roll a d20, please? Guild artisan. Stops on a three. All right, we'll have to check out what number three is. <laughs> Excellent. We keep moving. Now, what is our class and our subclass? Raz, will you please roll a d12 and let us know what uh, which class we are making? If it's druid, we're going to re-roll because we already made an entithrop druid. Stops on a ten. A sorcerer. Very interesting. Okay. So there are five different kinds of sorcerer. It goes out to six because storm is repeated in two different uh, in two different sources. So we have a grasshopper, a were grasshopper sorcerer. And uh, let's see, who else can I call on? Uh, who else can I call on here? Kitty Bird, will you please roll a, a D6? Will you roll a D6 in chat? Exclamation point 1D6. Stops on a four. One, two, three, four, which is fine because I'd skip over the second one anyway, and we'd re-roll a six. So we have a storm sorcerer. 
a Were Grasshopper Storm Sorcerer. Excellent. Now, for class features, sorcerers, sorcerers don't have any. We don't need to worry about it. We have an Ant Entithrope. We are going to find a Grasshopper Entithrope on our, on our sheet here. All right, Hark, will you roll a percentile to find out how old our grasshopper is? Stops on a nine, almost a child prodigy. Uh, we have a young adult were grasshopper uh, who is six plus one D four years old. Uh, Phytogen, you did a good job rolling a d4 before. Will you roll another d4 so we can find out how old our young adult were grasshopper is? All right, we have an eight-year-old young adult, eight years old. So they, the, the were grasshoppers mature more quickly. Now, as for the base height and weight, grasshoppers are probably going to be some of the bigger of the entithropes. Um, and so we'll roll this at, um, we'll say six foot plus a D12 to see just how tall a glass of water we have. Uh, Hypnotic Gamer, will you roll a D12 in chat? And so we'll say that our grasshopper's height is uh, six feet five inches and uh then we're going to uh let's let's take that and multiply it by 2d10 i'll roll that real quick by eight so we're going to be adding uh 40 probably a base weight uh, grasshoppers tend to be leaner um it's kind of arbitrary we're going to call this uh 180 pounds so long and lean. <laughs> Excellent. We have most of our placeholders. Uh, there is another one that I need. Uh, Kitty Bird the Shiny, can you type exclamation point 4D6 in chat so we can get our ideal bond and flaw? Oh, Sheeps, will you roll a D8 for a personality trait? And I'll roll a D8 as well. I have two. Then we have ideal two, uh, four, bond two, flaw two. And then we have personality traits two and three. Excellent. All right, we have our placeholders. Uh, again, I don't know what these mean just yet. And step by step, we're going to discover it together. As we build our character, we discover our character. We are going to begin character creation at the background. Chapter 4, for any of you playing along at home, we are going to the Guild Artisan section. Now, this is going to get changed up a little bit because there's the variant, which is the merchant. What do we sell? Three are brewers, distillers, and vintners. Oh, sheeps, you wanted someone proficient with brewing tools. I think you got it. Um... Now the question is, which one? A brewer, a distiller, or a vintner? Oh, sheeps, roll a D3 to discover what kind of alcohol um, our grasshopper makes. One, a brewer, makes beer. All right, uh, Guild Artisan, 
Uh, sounds like the dice are rigged in Sheep's favor. Um, if she has psychic powers. <laughs> Totem, you gotta, you gotta give it to O Sheeps. All right, we have insight, insight, and persuasion are going to be our proficiencies from our background. Insight and persuasion. One type of artisan's tools. Uh, well, we have brewer supplies. Now, the alternate does, if you don't want the brewer supplies, you could get something like navigator's tools. Though, I don't see why someone who makes a, a living selling beer also doesn't understand how to craft it. Uh, as uh, also. Random hero, three months. Enjoy your spicier, uh, your spicier chat badge. Thank you. A grasshopper that makes their beer using hops. Is this what? Somehow I feel that 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 joke has been building. Random hero, thank you for re-upping. Enjoy your queso next to your name. You've moved up from uh, from a nice like salsa verde or a guac. You now have a queso next to your name. All right, a language of our choice. So I'm going to indicate that with some question marks so we can fill that in later. Uh, and then a set of artisan's tools. Letter of introduction. All right. Our letter of introduction, just as we did with the locksmith, what is something that would be like our, our magnum opus? What could be... Our, our cask, our brewing barrel, our hydrometer, something that is important to us that is a mark that we belong to the Brewers Guild. And so this uh, um, guild, I'm going to just call it Guild Proof, is trinket number. And Totem Fiend, will you roll a percentile set in chat, please? We're going through uh, teaching how to make a character. Uh, uh, is that a kuta? Is that like a, a hard T? Uh, we're going through a workshop to teach and to review some of the D&D &D time homebrew material. Stops on a 69. It's no 42, but whatever. <laughs> Suddenly just the, the, the chat floods with nice. <laughs> Uh, but this is interactive, and so uh, uh, Kuta, uh, Kuta, if you have suggestions, if you have ideas as we're discovering our character step by step, you are welcome to share them in chat. And hey, English Mudkip. Did you have fun doing so, English Mudkip? Oh, Tamarick, you taking off? Yep, all right, Tamarick. Thanks for hanging out with us. Have a great night. All right. Excellent. Uh, now, I don't know what this is just yet. Don't worry. We'll get around to it. Let's discover more about our character first. So we know that our, our grasshopper wear, our wear grasshopper, our grasshopper entithrope is a brewer that belongs to the Brewers Guild. Our background feature is guild membership, and this is such an awesome one. It gives you economic clout, social clout, political clout. Uh, it is really, really, really good from a role playing st uh, from a role playing standpoint. Um, you know, it, even if you, you know, if you like numbers, you could play the accounting mini game uh, that is intrinsic to um, that's intrinsic to D and D as well. If you're a, a guild member, and in D and D time, you don't have to worry about the the monthly bill to join the guild because that's taken care of. Because money is pretty well irrelevant, uh, irrele irrelevant in D and D time. That sounds like fun English. Uh, so if you have tales from the tabletop to, to share, you're welcome to do that here and or on our Discord tabletop tale section. I always like reading about this. Now let's discover more about our our wear hopper. Personality trait. Personality trait number two. I'm a snob who looks down on those who can't appreciate fine art. 
Now this could be fine art as in, yeah, he brews, but he also likes statues or shrubberies or gardening or painting or whatever. Or I'm a beer snob. I am a, I'm an, a craft brewing beer snob. Do we have a craft brewer beer snob? Avant-garde hipster? Grasshopper? <laughs> oh, sheeps. And this reminds you of your fiance, Hypnotic? Now, his other personality trait is three. I always want to know how things work and what makes people tick. Or, for Entithropes, what makes ticks people? I always want to know how things work and what makes people tick. We have another person who wants to figure out others. A grass hipster. Oh my gosh. Oh, sheeps. Oh, sheeps is on fire. It's got to be the hooves. From downtown. Now, his ideal, I'm going to scoot this over. His ideal is number four, greed. I'm only in it for the money. So we have a grass hipster who makes independent brews, does it for the money, and also looks down on people for not appreciating his fine craft. Our bond is number two. I created a great work for someone and then found them unworthy to receive it. I'm still looking for someone worthy. So we created a beer. This was the piece de resistance. Oh, oh. And the person to whom we were going to give this beer disappointed us so greatly that we said, no, no. And we took our drink back and we're looking for someone to taste this beer who's worth it. Oh, Sheep says, God, this is a hipster. And lastly, our flaw. We're just going to skip this. We have a perfect character. All right. His flaw is number two. I'm quick to assume that someone is trying to cheat me. I'm quick to assume that someone is trying to cheat me. Very suspicious. Uh, probably takes grievance at a lot of things, even on behalf of other people. Uh, well, I mean, I hope that's something that he can overcome. That's that. That's no way to live. My goodness. I'm quick to assume that some. So, like, someone's trying to bilk me. Someone's trying to tear down my reputation. You know, uh, did you just call me a whatever? Um, someone who just. <laughs> someone who jumps to conclusions. Grasshopper. All right. Well, we have the personality of apparently our craft brewing hipster wear grasshopper. I'm a snob who looks down on those who can't appreciate fine art. I always want to know how things work and what makes people tick. I'm only in it for the money. So despite being, oh, so, you know, whatever he, po he, uh, he magically posts on uh, social magic media, but honestly, everything is like, give me money, give me money, give me money. I'm totally in it for the community. Give me money. Give me money. Give me money. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then, of course, tells people that they're bad social people uh, through magical social media, uh, despite apparently selling out the independent spirit of uh, small-time brewing. Um, 
I created a great work for someone, and so yeah, and then we're even we're even gatekeeping. Ah, oh, we're even gatekeepers of our of our our apparently cultural contribution, which is really just out there for money. We are also gatekeepers of culture. <laughs> who tell other people that they are wrong and take offense for ourselves and other people at the slightest drop of a hat. Can grasshoppers grow beards and man buns? Because this one needs it. <laughs> I mean, he probably has the antenna, you know, kind of like... Wears a long sleeve plaid shirt, uh, cargo uh, uh, cargo kilt, um, and then uh, like Timberland boots with uh, with Hello Kitty socks. <laughs> That's it, everyone. We have just created a character, let alone for D and D time, because this this would be an absolutely raucous D and D time character. We've done it. Who needs the rest of this stuff? We've already made a character. No more workshops. We can't top this ever, everyone. Maddie Morgs completes in the year 2019. <laughs> Time for retirement. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> what a character we've made. Oh my goodness. Jeez. <laughs> Hi, Baloo's Clues. <laughs> it's all downhill from here, yeah, right? Oh my gosh. What an awesome character. <laughs> well, we gotta keep we gotta keep moving forward, everyone. All right. Now, I keep talking about a were grasshopper. What in the good golly gracious is an entithrope, let alone a were gra uh, grasshopper? Well, for any of you who are curious, yes, it was a were ant, Raz. Yes, we won D&D tonight, Necrocleric. Ha ha ha. Oh, that, that, that's a cute little burby moat you have there. Oh, sheep's jinx. Um, so I would urge you to... Hey, the, all of this stuff is available for you to read. If you want to run it at your own tabletop, go ahead. They, you have their blessing to do so. But you can play these characters. Bunny folk, Entithropes, Florins, Grung, Undead. In D&D &D time. I would highly suggest uh, signing up and playing. Go to dndtime.stream. Pete and Jeremy are awesome people. Great production value. Lots of fun. And tomorrow, technically tonight, because it's already Friday, their big Carnival of Souls, Halloween, uh, boss battle. All night, all characters are welcome, and you just come and beat down uh, the big boss. All right, so as an Entithrope, in general, let alone specifically a Grasshopper, we have, uh, we have a constitution bump of one. We already have our age alignment. And, uh, and so, you know what? We're also, <laughs> I, if we want to lean into the stereotype of sheeps as lawful neutral, um, we're very selectively applying. Uh, th this is an um, actually. This is a rules lawyer as well. Um, oh my gosh. This is someone who will definitely blog about their opinion because they read a sentence in a paragraph about something. And, uh... <laughs> anyway. Uh, so we have our size. Our speed is 30 feet. So that's going to give us a run of 30. 15 climb, 15 swim, 0 fly. Um, carapace. We have a, a chitinous, a kittenness. Chitinous. Uh, exoskeleton. When you aren't wearing armor, your AC is 12 plus dex or con. You can use your carapace to determine your armor class, even if the armor is lesser. Uh, shields benefits apply as normal. So we have a carapace. We also have extra arms. You have at least one additional set of smaller arms. 
The arms cannot be used to grapple, make attacks, effectively wield a shield, or perform similar strenuous or complex tasks, but can be used for any of the simple tasks, or for any simple tasks, such as to open a door, carry a torch, use a tool, or perform the somatic components of spells. We also have insectoid communication, which is um, their, their own custom kind of a, a racial language that all entithropes have. We also can speak common as uh, an entithrope. We have silvered vulnerability. Your therianthrope heritage causes you vulnerability to silvered weapons. Languages we have and subrace. We uh, so we made an ant therian last time. Now we are making a grasshopper therian or a warehopper. Warehopper colonies are nomadic. Now, of course, the one that you make could be the exception to the rule. This is this is them having built um, a, a role play community for them. So if they need to reference it, there's a solid base of reference. If you're playing and you discover one of these. Uh, more than other entithropes, they are gregarious and enjoy the company of other humanoids, though not uh, not much so as the fellow members of their colonies. So they are they certainly are, you know, their own. Um, you know, I, I love hanging out with non other grasshoppers. Uh, I'm sure with with this. I do want to urge that we're making a parody stereotype of, uh, you know, a, sort of an, an extreme version of, uh, you know, characters that we may know. Um, but certainly, you know, that continues with the, the general lore here. Uh, your charisma score increases by two. The distance of your long jumps is tripled. Every foot of its walking speed that you are... Every foot of its walking speed that you spend on a jump allows you to move three feet. The distance of your long jumps is tripled. Every foot of its walking speed that you spend on a jump allows you to move three feet. We have Extraordinary Leap. Because we, again, we jump to conclusions, and we certainly have, uh, uh... Extraordinary leap. Are you saying that? No. I just said. I just said I like this cheese. Well, you know, uh, if it wasn't for all the cow farts, then, you know, the dairy farmers would be at the at the beer social party. You're just like, dude, I just like cheese. I don't care about cow farts. <laughs> Yeah, English Mudkip, thank you. Um, gelatos are vegan. <laughs> we also have fiddled legs. Your legs can be used as a natural instrument. You are proficient with this instrument. <laughs> what a character. He always has his mixtape ready also. <laughs> no, I, uh, I, if none of you got the reference, it, uh, I don't, did any of you out there get the gelato vegan reference? That's why he wears cargo, uh, cargo kilts, oh sheeps. So his legs are always ready to play his music. Always ready to play his music. Anyway, here's Wonderwall. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you a message later, sheeps. It's probably gonna crack you up. Uh, anyway, I'm not gonna do that right now. <laughs> 
So we are we are a warehopper. We're a warehopper. And uh No I I know milk and eggs, that was that was part of the joke. H has anyone seen has anyone seen Scott Pilgrim versus the world? That's that's what the reference was to. Where hopper, there hopper. All right, now we need to go to the player's handbook. <laughs> this is getting silly. <laughs> and we're going to build a sorcerer, everyone. Now, oh, we're just putting on levels of sorcerer. We'll add the storm stuff. We'll add the storm stuff later. Oh, you know what? Oh, sheeps. I got to figure out what what trinket oh is this gonna build into the the myth of this of this grass hipster that we're <laughs> that we're making oh my goodness all right let's let's find out what his uh what his piece de resistance his signet his guild proof that he's in the brewer's guild uh it's his custom uh his custom uh imported slash domestically uh weighted something or other uh, it, it was number 69. This is his, uh, proof that he's in the Brewer's Guild. A crystal knob from a door. Crystal knob from a door. The, is the crystal knob supposed to be like the sample? Did he take it? From the CEO of a big brewery on his way out to teach the man a lesson. Is this something that, uh, was this left over? And he used his grasshopper inheritance, uh, to make a microbrewery, uh, from which he sits in a lofty position atop a keg to look down on the rest of us plebeians. Uh, how does the crystal knob work as proof of the guild? Or... Is entrance to the guild hall, the door cannot open from the outside unless guild members have a crystal, a crystal knob to put into the door and then they can gain entrance. It's a statement against capitalism. Um... Well, he is in it for the money. I mean, he's simul his statement about capitalism is that he's an independent brewer who preaches one thing and is in it for hand over fist uh, money making uh, by uh, by exploiting the niche market. So, but yes, so he can hobnob or hopnob. Raz, uh, good pun, good pun. I like it. It builds into his character absolutely. That you know, secretly in one of the in one of the pockets of his cargo kilt here, uh, he carries a, a crystal knob uh, as evidence of his wealth and his uh, and his uh, you know membership into the into the guild uh, while he's trying to promote independent brewing. You know, from the from one mandible he says this. From the other mandible, you get a whole other spiel. He'll make a statement to feel socially superior over others, but he'll take advantage of the system at the same time. <laughs> this is getting real. <laughs> All right. <laughs> As a sorcerer. As a sorcerer. At level three. We have uh, four level one spell slots and two level twos. Our proficiency bonus is plus two. We know four cantrips. One, a two, a three, four. Sorcerers have D6 hit points. And as we're third level, we have three, I'm sorry, not, uh, we have uh, D6 hit die. And at third level, wouldn't you know, boy howdy, 
We have three D6 hit die. And hit die are what you spend on rests to naturally recover any, any sort of damage that you've taken, so you don't have to always have uh, potions or magic sp uh, spells. We have no armor proficiency, so we're probably going off our carapace here. Uh, weapons, daggers, darts, slings. I'm simply going to put sorcerer weapons, as that is a curated list, and you can access this in your player's handbook. Um, no tool proficiencies. Uh, saving throws are constitution and charisma. And then we get to choose two skills from arcana, deception, insight, intimidation, persuasion, and religion. Well, we already have persuasion. And we already have insight. So we're going to get to choose two from arcana, deception, intimidation, and religion. If we look down here, I'm a snob who looks down on those who can't appreciate fine art. I always want to know how things work and what makes people tick. Greed, I'm only in it for the money. I created a great work for someone and then found them unworthy to receive it. Um, uh, I'm still looking for someone worthy to this day. And I'm quick to assume that someone's trying to cheat me. Definitely, we have a cheerleader for the cancel culture. I think we have intimidation right here. Uh, let's see. And from this... Arcana, deception, into... Oh, we already have intimidation. Or religion. If we want to find out what makes people tick... From the skills still available. And as someone who peddles alcohol and makes alcohol. I would say religion. Because many people operate off of religion. Religions are often very cultural. And also, therefore, religions can be exploited by people who want to make money. By tapping, brewing... By tapping into a religion and talk, talking up its culture, talking up, uh, you know, good and bad, or not, not bad, um, but talking up things. And then you use that as a way to enhance yourself. It's very duplicitous because a way that many people operate is by having religion be a fundamental part of who they are. Now, whether or not that gives them, you know, things we disagree with as humans, because that's what that's what happens. Anytime you have, like anarchy is absolutely the best form of government if there's only one person ever. You do what you want. Unfortunately, once you have more than one person, that stops being, you know, the best form of government. Um, yeah, there's trees, there's squoils, we'll bless them all. Uh, so I could, you know, for someone then who is, you know, who true new or like lawful neutral you know pretends to or even probably like meditates but it's like you know corporate meditation kind of a thing or outward meditation meanwhile you know other things are going on through his mind i would think that religion uh could both be a part of this character and also be a methodology to tap into markets but then not not tap to give beer but tap to extract the muns All right, uh, starting equipment, you get your starting equipment. Honestly, equipment and money in D&D time is not, um, is not uh, a big deal. You have unlimited money. Uh, get, what, get most of whatever equipment you want. Armor and some other things uh, are done through a process you can read about at dn, the letter n, the letter d, the letter n, the letter d, time.stream. So I'm not going to worry about the equipment. Uh, we'll still make, you know, if we attack with a strength weapon, if we attack with a dex weapon, there we go. Um, in fact, you know what? We, we talked about a sorcerer using a uh, an arcane focus. Our crystal knob may very well be our arcane focus as well. So we also get to flaunt it. 
Uh, and then, of course, we say that it's a tool for good, even though it's, you know, doing... We get to tell a group of people we're doing one thing, and then the other... Uh, anyway, one mandible and the other. Uh, spell slots? I'm not worried about spells right yet. I'm not even worried about our ability scores. Scores are fun. That's frosting on the cake. I want to know more about our character first. Uh, Sorceress Origin. Well, wouldn't you know, we get this at... Uh, we get this at level one. Because you're you're born with it. You you have the mojo flowing already through you. Um, at level two we have Font of Magic, which is gonna give us some uh, some sorcery points, and we can manipulate those for more points, more slots, etc. And uh, you know, at third level, well look at this, we have three sorcery points. And you know what happens at fourth level? We have four sorcery points. Isn't isn't that nice? So we have sorcery points, flexible casting, and then at third level, we get meta magic. Hey, we get two different forms of meta magic based on his personality. I'm a snob who looks down on those who can't appreciate fine art. I always want to know how things work and what makes people tick. Greed, I'm only in it for the money. I created a great work for someone, found them unworthy. I'm quick to assume someone's trying to cheat me. If we have a quick temper, I think quick and spell, absolutely. So you go, and you can throw out a spell and then a cantrip. I think quick and spell is going to work for him. And... Hmm... Hi, Cyart. Good morning to you. <laughs> hmm. I don't think he's subtle. Twin spell could work. He has two sets of hands. Twin spell might be really good. That also is a little bit of a, a symbolic uh, re reflection of his duplicitousness. Duplicitousness. I said it. All right, Sire. I'll, I'll take a look at it in just a second here. Now, we don't get our, our ability score improvement, um, so we don't, uh, we're going to have our racial bumps plus our starting standard array. Uh, now, for the Storm Sorcerer portion, we are going to open up Xanathar's Guide to Everything. Whoops. And turn to page 51. Whoop. Or maybe 52. Anyway. All right. Your innate magic comes from the power of elemental air. Many with this power can trace their magic back to a near-death experience caused by the great rain. But perhaps you were born during a howling gale so powerful that folks still tell stories of it. Or your lineage might include the influence of potent air creatures such as djinn. Whatever the case, the magic of the storm permeates your being. Maybe we're struck by lightning. And we didn't realize that we had to change our lifestyle. Storm sorcerers are invaluable members of a ship's crew. Their magic allows them to exert control over wind and weather in their immediate area. Their abilities also prove useful in repelling attacks by uh, Sahagin, pirates, and other waterborne threats. So sorcerer level first, so we're going to get Windspeaker and Tempestuous Magic. However, we're not high enough for the other features, which you'll find in Xanathar's Guide. So Windspeaker, the arcane magic you command is infused with elemental air. You can speak, read, and write primordial. Knowing this language allows you to understand and be understood by those who speak its dialects, 
Aquan, Orin, Ignan, and Terran. Primordial. And Tempestuous Magic. Starting at first level, you can use a bonus action on your turn to cause whirling gusts of elemental air to briefly surround you immediately before you cast a spell of first level or higher. Doing so allows you to fly... Oh my goodness, and we're a grasshopper also. Doing so allows you to fly up to 10 feet without provoking opportunity attacks. So we're, we, all, we have the hops in our beer and in our movement. Yeah, so every time we summon magic to cast, we can just fly 10 feet. We have become the ultimate hopper. <laughs> Just become the locust. Well, I mean, we could describe a, a were grasshopper as a were locust also. Or even a were cricket, I suppose, if you want. I don't see why not. Excellent. So we have the chassis of our character. We understand his personality. We understand what he's after, what how he functions, what he does, and who he is. That's exactly what you want in a character. And look at this. We don't even, I mean, the, the stats are going to be important, but right now we don't even care about the numbers game. We care about the, we care about the character. If you are running this, uh, this, um, hopster, uh, this hopster micro brew sellout, uh, grasshopper, wear grasshopper, you should be comfortable in knowing how to role play him. What would you say in certain situations? What would your attitude towards Bartholomew the wizard be? I could probably give you the answer to that. I don't know if Blood Deuce or any other uh, folks who are uh, who uh, hang out at D&D &D time uh, might be able to, uh, to inform you. But a character like this might have a, a special attitude towards Bartholomew the wizard, who's the main, like, the quest giver. Um, the, the, the major personality at D&D &D time. All right, now we can we can drop in our stats. We are certainly charismatic in both our magic and everything that we do. Uh, that we do, we are avant garde. We are a critic. We also critique. Um, absolutely, our major stat is going to be charisma. No, you're fine, Blood Deuce. You, you, I, I don't, I don't want to invoke you if you got to go to bed or something. I'm in it for the money. You know, it's it's who you rub, it's who you rub fiddling legs with, in order to get by in this business. From here, that's our fifteen. Um. I would even say we brew beer and, uh, you know, so not only do we look good, we feel good. And so maybe we'll give a 14, like we certainly do yoga and we can put our 13 in con also. So we're healthy inside and out. We may brew beer, but maybe we don't even drink our own. Uh, and instead, uh, we have a nitrogen infused kombucha. Uh, delivered to us daily from uh, a continent over uh, through teleportation. 100% does yoga. So we could be healthy inside and out. Uh, I think for sure he, he does have some edumacation. So I'm going to put our 12 in intelligence because we are kind of a schemer. We, we have to figure things out. Um, I would say average strength, but you know what? 
given the way that he acts, yes, he is good at insight. But to other things going on in the world, I think he's blind or doesn't have broad skills besides reading people's emotions so that he can understand them and and uh, and like pounce on the opportunity. Another another jumping joke. He gets it from somewhere exotic. What, what do you mean it defeats the purpose of drinking kombucha, oh sheeps? Gotta head to bed as I have to make two more characters and play in two campaigns tomorrow. All right, yep, you'll you should see me over there, hypnotic. Absolutely, have a good sleep. So I think we actually have a low wisdom character. Kombucha is supposed to be local, so it fills your gut with local bacteria to give you healthier immune system. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the strings and everything. Got it. Although, I, I don't know. I'd imagine a lot of kombuchas that are out there are just sort of filled with uh, the same probiotic whatevers. Um, so all their little all their little stringy do's are probably the same. But yeah, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, exo it's uh, exotically located... Uh, elements of a nitrogen infused uh, kombucha uh, vape. No, no, no. We, we don't drink kombucha. Uh, it goes into uh, it goes into a, uh, a hookah vapor. And while three other people could share in it with us, uh, we never invite them over. It's always ours. <laughs> How ridiculous are we? Are we making this? <laughs> uh, the Constitution goes to a fourteen. Wisdom's minus one, and charisma. Goes to 17. Hey, we get a three in this. Um, yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> there's no better way to unwind after yoga. I, I get it because you wind up uh, than going to uh, a hookah lounge. Almost done. Ah. to bed. Coffee Cat, almost a year. Thank you. Yeah. Coffee Cat hype. And for any of you who do have Coffee Cat hype, hype it. All right. This is going to give us a strength saving throw of zero, athletics of zero. Dex whoop, or is two down the line. Constitution's a four to save. And uh, intelligence is one down the line. Except religion, which is three. We, uh, insight's going to be a two. Everything else on wisdom is minus one. Uh, charisma saving throw is five. Intimidation's five. Persuasion's five. Performance and deception are three apiece. Oh, you finished page nine? Oh, we're getting closer and closer, coffee. That's great progress. Passive perception is going to be a nine, uh, because we're we're too busy uh, with our our head located elsewhere to uh, to look around us and to listen to what other people have to say instead of jumping to conclusions. Yeah, you've been absolutely rocking those coffee. Now armor class, we don't have armor proficiency, uh, though we can always uh, use our carapace if we'd like. Um. In fact, you know, I almost wonder if we swapped our dex and our con, that would make our con higher. And when we hit four, we could then go to a charisma 18 and dexterity 14. Or no, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, constitution uh, 16. I kind of like that. I, I think we're going to do that instead. And so that's going to be a one for now, and this will still be a two. But when we do play that one other game of D&D &D time, 
we're going to have a three con, and that's going to improve a lot of things for us. I think that works. Maybe not? I don't know. I'll, I will just throw it out there, and I'll just keep it 14 and 14 for right now. Y'all can figure out what you would want to do with this character in that instance. Anyway, our initiative is a plus two. We have zero dark vision. Our armor class, if we're not wearing armor and we're not using mage armor, is going to be a 14. We cannot use shield, so it is what it is. If we're making strength attacks, it's going to be at a plus two. If we're making dex attacks, it's going to be at a plus two. I'm sorry. Uh, four. Because we're prof uh, proficiency plus zero, proficiency plus two. Cantrips or whatever you want to give this character. Now, if we're attacking with spells, we have a plus five to hit with our spells. And to resist against their effects, it's a 13. As that's eight plus your attack. That's how you calculate it. It's just the, it's how it's done. Eight plus proficiency plus the relevant modifier. Our character no longer has a set of stats. We have a fleshed out character. I would love to hear opinions for the name of our Warehopper, Brewer. Uh, current hit points. At first level, you start with your maximum hit points of your hit die. So that's six. Then for our remaining two levels of our three, you get half plus one hit points. So half of six is three plus one is four. Then for all three of our levels, you get bonus hit points equal to your constitution modifier. And so here is our easy math. Six plus eight plus six is 20. We have 20 hit points at level three. We're gonna come down here. We have sorcery points. We have three of them because we're level three. Spellcasting was a 13 save, which is a plus five to hit. Spellcasting ability is Chaw. And we're casting as a sorcerer. Cantrips, we have four. One, two, three, and four. Then we had four level one spell slots and two level two spell slots. We're going to come back to the player's guide. And as you can see, spells known at first level... Hey, you get two spells that you know. Ta-da. Then at level two, you know a third spell. Ta-da. At level three, you can finally start casting second level spells. Doesn't mean you have to take a, a spell here. You can have uh, another first level spell if you want, and you just upcast. But if we're taking it as we can get it, level three goes here. And here's our spell list. Give this character the spells that you want it to have. Whatever makes sense for you. Elijah Cricket, Low Cust, or Logan Cust. Any other name suggestions from people out in the chat? What would you want to... What are name or name elements that you would call this character? Star Hopper.
All right, Coffee. Hey, Coffee, real quick. If you want to put a link to your, your channel, because uh, you were having some fun in San Antonio tonight, weren't you? You are welcome to put a link and, and give a quick little blurb about what goes on on your channel as another streamer. So we have these as, uh, let's see, Elijah, Cricket, Logan, Cust, Starhopper. So how about we have someone, Sid Kata? Oh my gosh. You all have the D&D time spirit, absolutely. Elijah Custar Lopper. So what about Custada, like Kata? Or Kata Star Cadaster. Elogen. Elogen. Kata Star. Oh, it's Cadaster. Oh, what a Cadaster. <laughs> Elogian Cadaster. Coffee Cat is a new storyteller for Vampire the Masquerade, San Antonio by Night on Wednesdays. And do fan art on Thursdays and Fridays. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, San Antonio was Wednesday. Uh, I have, I, it's, thir it was, well, it's technically Friday. I'm sorry. I, I got it mixed up. Yeah, have a great night, Coffee. Thank you for stopping by, re-upping almost one year. Oh, my goodness. The tingles. You are so close to that 12-month badge now. Be well, Coffee. People who know him call him Sid. Or gotta be gotta be S I D. It has to be different. There we go. Ta da Is Sid one of the grasshoppers in Bugs Life? I don't know. But that that would be interesting. Oh, sheeps, you got to do some quick research. I love it. Oh, man. What a character. What a character. You know, it might come across as kind of a heel. Might come across as a bit of a heel. But this character would be tremendous amounts of fun to play. And I think it would be very easy to roleplay this character. Since you would, you would just know the decisions you're going to make on his behalf. Very well done. It explores, uh, it, it does explore, it, it, it uses that Entithrope build, especially as a grasshopper that has these mad hops. 
Maybe that's the name of his uh, of his brew, Mad Hops. Yeah, Sid with an S. <laughs> it's not. Must have been thinking of something else. Uh, with what little it's worth from someone with no official affiliation, I'm proud of y'all for what we've accomplished tonight. I'm gonna head to sleep though. Peace, everyone. All right, Blood Deuce. Um, Blood Deuce, there's not enough time tonight because I have to. I have an early morning uh, for a car appointment. Otherwise, I'd, I'd stay up if you were up as well, and we'd, we'd make a beat character for you so you could see how one operates. But you know what? We might still, I don't know, on Saturday or something, I, I might I might be able to make a bee. We'll, we'll find out how, how the, the process goes. Just a little reminder for anyone who wasn't here earlier trying to get... Oh, yes, that's right, Totem. There are 18 capsules left. If a person or persons adopt nine of them, Totem will pick up the other nine to clear it out. Otherwise, once this broadcast ends, this is refilling from 18 to 50. And there's still the Avernus dice and some other really good goodies in pieces of paper. Ooh, there's a piece of paper. There's other pieces of paper and other cool minis that are down in there. And this is the most potent opportunity to get these pulls that are remaining. A, d a dice bag? No. There's definitely not a dice bag anywhere in this box specifically under my hand. What are you talking about? What? You want me to move my hand to prove it? Sure. Look at that. See? I told you. See, look. I don't know. Oh, 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 um. <laughs> yeah, it's just the light reflecting off. Uh, it's just the light reflecting off the yellow cap is what you're seeing. Funny how that works. <laughs> All right, everyone, I'm going to shuffle this around. Oh, wow, look at what we got. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a it's a, a it's a mylar weather balloon uh, filled with swamp gas um, <laughs> uh, during uh, during an event of St. Elmo's fire and um it's also Friday the 13th and a new moon uh, with Aurora Borealis in the distance. <laughs> Y'all are something else. Yeah, yeah, uh, it was uh, Saturn uh, was bouncing off the uh, the lower hemisphere and the I'm, I'm trying to come up with like jargon and weird mispronunciations here uh, <laughs> totally totally all right well i am not hearing anyone else saying hold up hold on a tick And so, I believe it's about time to end the stream. I will have to refill 32 capsules, it seems. Sid was the name of the sloth in Ice Age. Oh, thank you for doing the research, Raz. <laughs> 